Welcome to the Local Marketing Source Weekly Update, brought to you by LocalMarketingSource.com. This week's Local Marketing Update is brought to you by Scott Gallagher. Scott is the co-founder of Local Marketing Source and has become the recognized expert in providing online marketing services to local businesses. Follow Scott on Twitter at ScottGallagher5 and on Facebook.com slash Scott P. Gallagher. Hey, well, good afternoon, everyone. Scott Gallagher here with Local Marketing Source, bringing you our weekly local marketing industry update. Now, next week's LMS member call. It is going to be on, well, holy cow, we're in December, and that's going to be December 3rd at 4 p.m. Eastern. Wow, that's amazing how we're getting to the end of the month, end of the year. Wow. Well, you know, a lot never happened in this last week in local, so I am going to talk a little bit about a topic that a lot of people have a lot of questions about, and that's called tracking. And figured I'd take the opportunity since there weren't a lot of changes. And we just had a really good webinar. Uh, you guys on the line right now are LMS students. Um, we had a few new students come in today. We had a promo today. We had our Black Friday special. And a lot of you came in last year because of that. So it's exciting, exciting time of year because we're going to see several new students come into the portal and, you know, make them welcome, guys. Um, they all go through a lot of the same stuff. So let's get started and talk a little bit about call tracking and what call tracking really is and some of the problems with call tracking. Well, a local business spends money in Yelp. A local business spends money in the newspaper. Then they spend money in the yellow pages. Then they spend money on paid advertising. And then they start getting all these phone calls. Where are the phone calls coming from? Well, we can ask people, where'd you hear about us? But it really doesn't give us a lot of data. So call tracking is really nice because we can give each channel a different phone number. And then we have a call log. And we know that, hey, if they were calling number number two, phone number two, and that was in our phone book, you know, it's generating some leads. So next year we can decide where are we going to put our money. It makes a lot of sense. One thing in marketing that's very, very important is measuring return and, and activity. So there's a huge desire for call tracking. But on the other side of the token, there's a phone number that's the different phone number for the same business all over the place, and it goes to the same spot. And one could argue there's deception there, but the another one could argue much more strongly that this doesn't follow principles of branding or basic marketing fundamentals and that's been the big caveat with search engines is that one thing that they are looking for is consistency in the nap the name and the address and the phone number for branding purposes how many times have you seen 800 numbers that utilize letters for memorability factors or use little jingles that go along with it well, those are all branding strategies. That's what we've been accustomed to. And, and, and branding is, this is how I communicate with this business. And they see another phone number and they think, oh. So call tracking is, is kind of like a, a paradoxical situation. Uh, there's benefits to it, but then there are um, a lot of hindrances, a lot of risks, let's say, that will go along with it. Today in 2014, there's some solutions that do exist, but there's still risks associated to them. And I've been leery to utilize them. Now, I know some of our students are utilizing CallRail. You may be familiar with CallRail as a tracking tool. It's becoming more and more important because our, our appetite for business data is, is vastly, I mean, it's increasing significantly. Consumers and customers want to see this data a lot more. So there's got to be solutions that are going to eventually effectively exist that provide full call tracking for local search. Now, call tracking is important 
um, because it does give a lot of accountability to firms. And we provide a very honest, direct service. So I definitely want to prove to my clients that the, the, the activities we do are ultimately resulting in phone calls. So it provides us with accountability. It will give us better KPIs or key performance indicators. You know, metrics is everything. You know, Bob Parsons, he runs C, uh, GoDaddy. You know, his most famous quote is, everything that's measured improves. Yeah. Keep dirty thoughts out, Mr. Gallagher. Um, <laughs> you get a lot of different advanced features with tracking and, and whatnot. Now, like I said, the biggest concern is with call tracking is your NAP consistency, your name and address phone number for branding purposes. And the last thing that we ever want to do as an SEO is introduce any contradictory data points. But call tracking solutions largely dismiss this concern. So there are there's some problems that are really out there. And even to this day, call tracking is still something that could ultimately hurt you. Now, what happens with when we when we talk about conversations like name portability or vanity numbers, um, there's a lot of dirty numbers out there and call tracking numbers are recycled by these firms quite frequently. And so a lot of searches are done via phone number alone to find out information about a business. And if they're utilizing your phone number and it starts to be attached to other firms, what does that say about a business or that you don't own this aspect? And the search engines truly give a lot of concern about this. Now, it doesn't give a lot of trust to a business when you see that they're attached to a whole variety of other businesses that, that are out there. Now, today people don't – see, people don't remember numbers like, like they used to. You know, I get the question asked all the time about domain names, and I, I think like domain names are just so irrelevant in today's day and age unless it's, you know, a domain name like Uber or Yahoo or Google. Uh, but for local businesses, domain names are highly irrelevant these days. The, the idea of putting keywords into domain names is so old. Um, Now, when numbers start to get recycled and they start to get around, they've now got a name to it. And these are called what we call dirty numbers. And when you get a call tracking number that's a dirty number, in other words, it's been used by somebody else within the last 12 months, trust me, that is really going to hurt a lot of your rankings and a lot of your branding. Companies like CallRail don't recycle their numbers as frequently. Now, it costs them a lot more money, but... Changes now. One thing that Google has eased up on is cloaking. We know cloaking as an SEO strategy that's highly black hat. You've probably never heard of me talking about cloaking, but there are certain times that cloaking is accepted, and certain businesses that offer call tracking and you cloak pages, Google accepts it. What does that mean? That means that I become a call tracking customer of CallRail. They give me a bunch of numbers and a whole bunch of website code. And they say, insert this code onto your website. With that, tied into Google Analytics, depending on where the traffic is coming from, CallRail will generate a tracking number and display that number. Then it gives us the tracking data analytics that we want. But when the search engines come and look at it, or when you go to that website directly, or you come from a source that does not is not included in the tracking code, the same number displays. Now, 
what an option is ordered to do there is port your existing phone number over to a call tracking provider. You know, this is great for businesses that are, are already established and that have a lot of work on the NAP consistency across the web. So it's a good option if you also if you have a vanity number or you just don't want to go through the hassle of updating your citations across the internet with a new phone number. This is the option. And porting a number over to a call tracking provider can take a long time. It can take up to six weeks. So many, and I'll tell you, I come from the telecom and the telco world. And when we had ports, that means you have a customer that's leaving you. They would sit on the desks for as long as possible. Employees inside these companies would laugh and go, ah, we're going to fuck over AT&T and make them wait and blah, blah, blah. And it was so it's going to take a long time. All right. Um, so when you the other cost to it, when you port a number, let's say you have one line coming in and you port that number over to your call tracking company to get that code and track everything. You now have to get us another line in to get another number. So call tracking might be 40 or 50 bucks a month for that business, but another line is going to be another 50 bucks. Your second option to do call tracking properly is to choose a new phone number with a local area code from a call tracking phone number, or call tracking provider. In other words, you're changing your phone number. So if you're a new business, great. But how many new businesses have the money to implement into call tracking? Not a lot. This should be the option if you do have the money and you are a new business doing it. But, but again, it's going to create a massive mess for established businesses. Um, so when you do get numbers and you do get a number from a call tracking provider, the very first thing that you should do is do a Google search for that. What we're looking for is dirty numbers. And you don't want dirty numbers with call tracking. Just put the number in the Google and see if anybody else is tied to it in the data set. If you're finding anybody else is tied to it, ask for a new call tracking number. That's really the jits of call tracking in today's day and age and the options that you have to be able to work with it. I do recommend call, call rail as the solution. And then start analyzing and looking at the data. The nice things about some nice things about call rails, you can record the calls, you can do spot checks. Um, we've actually had LMS students that have communicated with the prospect and said, listen, man, I got to fire you or you got to fire your secretary because when she gets on the phone, she's hurting your business. She's hurting my results and the secretary gets fired. That's what we're here for. Well, um, I mean, really, just to wrap it all up here, that call tracking can be extremely valuable. We know this, and it's a very good tool in the SEO tool belt, provided that you understand the risks, how to manage those risks, and how to best analyze all the data. So I hope that that is enough uh, discussion today. Um, I don't have anything else to talk about. Every once in a while, once or twice a year, I have these short 15-minute calls. That concludes this Local Marketing Weekly Update, brought to you by LocalMarketingSource.com. This update is provided from the Local Marketing Source Professional Development Program for Local Marketers. Visit LocalMarketingSource.com for additional resources focused on online marketing for local businesses.